Um, we're going to talk about all about food and drink and brand partnerships. And in celebration of the fact that we're doing this, we thought we'd do a live taste test of the latest brand partnership to catch our attention. This is the Nexus Level, which is a uh, Xbox and Krispy Kreme collaboration. You can see it here. There's three in this box, and Benjoy, you've also got one of these. How long was the round trip you took to get this donut today? Uh, the round trip probably was maybe an hour and a quarter, just because we, <laughs> we had to stop somewhere else. But uh, yeah, I wasn't a corporate shill. I only got the one. Adam, Adam panics and bought three. Um, well, I didn't know yeah, what if two of them were bad. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> what if you don't like it, and now you've just got two... Like, I've hedged my bets, and I've got three different ones, so... Um, we have no idea what they actually taste like. I mean, you said in the shop you think they might taste like Halo. I, um, yeah. They're, they're green. I don't I don't know what to fully expect. Um, but yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to taste these live, is the plan. Um, let us know in the chat if you're interested in an Xbox Krispy Kreme donut, or if you've had one already, let us know what you think. Uh, ben, how do you want to do this? Do you want to go first? Shall I go first, or should we do the same are we time? Doing, are we do, we doing the taste test now? We can do the taste test now. Unless, what do you, what do you uh, want to do now? Let, let's do the taste test. I think we should go at the same time. I don't okay. want you to be swayed by my reaction. I don't want to be swayed by yours. I think let's, let's okay, do it. Okay. Look at these. It's, I mean, it doesn't look healthy. Straight away, I can tell you, that green. Investigat investigative journalism, this here is chocolate. <laughs> oh, I hope it's chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. So we think, so it's, got cho we think it's got chocolate filling. We think it's a chocolate filling, yeah. We haven't done our research at all. Okay, so you ready then? <laughs> yeah. On... I, I don't want to know what it tastes like before I eat. I want total surprise. Okay. Are we going? Three, two, one, go. It's definitely chocolate. Yep. Yeah. Strong chocolatey flavour in there. Can you taste the halo? Oh yeah, you can. You can That's really, Master Chief if ever I. Uh, ever you I can it. really taste Master Chief. The suit really seals in the flavour. There's a lot of chocolate in there. Yeah, there's a lot of chocolate. Mm. See, this is why I brought the kitchen roll. Mm. Two guys with beards eating chocolatey and floury donuts. It's very chocolatey. If you, if you like chocolate, this is the one for you. That's really nice. I'm pleasantly surprised. Mm. So yeah. There's more Get sirens yourself, outside, I'm yeah. still chewing. Ben, yeah. tell us about brands and food and games. So, yeah, so there's, there's a couple of different avenues for, for partnerships with food uh, and beverages in games. And we'll talk about this one first because it's relevant to what we um, or what we just did, um, tasting the Xbox One. So this is rather than um, like a, a branded thing or a, an in-game thing, this is a clearly a partnership between, between the two brands. And Xbox does this a lot. A Xbox partners with a lot of brands and specifically they partner with quite a lot of um, food, food and drink brands. They've got a long-standing relationship with Pizza Hut. Um, and there's normally when they do things like this, there's um, like a competition thing to it. Um, kind of a little bit of a boost to both brands. So the way that this um, that this is working uh, with the Xbox Donut is if you go to Krispy Kreme and you have to get, get a dozen, you have to get a dozen Xbox ones, but you have to buy a dozen donuts, and one of them, I believe, has to be the Xbox one. If you do that, you get uh, a code to enter yourself into like a raffle, and you can win a Microsoft Series uh, S. Um, which is the, the new console, the, the digital only uh, version of the one without the disk drive. Yep. Um, and you also get, regardless of whether you win, you get a month free on um, Xbox Games Pass Ultimate. That's only if you're a new customer. So me and Adam are already uh, customers. So, and we already have Xboxes, so there was no need for us to buy a dozen. So we just got three, because uh, we don't need either thing. But hey, it was enticing enough for us to go and try them out. I mean, you um, drove over so an hour to get to get I this did, yeah. I, I <laughs> left the water side, drove into Southampton, walked Krispy Kreme, met you, got it, came back specifically for this. So don't say we never do anything for this show. Yeah. Um, I'm suffering from my but, art this week. Yeah, you earned it from all that exercise. <laughs> um, I just wanted a donut, so I, I wasn't bothered. Yeah, um, I wanted to yeah. ask you about trends because 
obviously this is a donut, not very healthy. When we think about food brands and gaming, people probably think about Doritos, they think about Mountain Dew, they think about Monster Energy Drink, all things that maybe are very associated with the classic archetype of a gamer, like Basement Dwelling Nerd, for lack of a better phrase. Um, but yep. we know we know that the gaming audience is so much broader than that. We know that they're especially year on year, the stats prove that games are for everyone and they're for all types of people, all walks of life. Um, and I'm wondering if there are any trends in food and drink that, that reflect that, that you know of. Like, are there any partnerships where it's like, oh, that's not the sort of food that you would expect to be involved in games or, or anything like that? Um, I, I think you're absolutely right. You kind of have that. It, the the less healthy food is feels more of a natural partnership. And I, and I feel like um, I wrote about this in a blog post like over a, a year ago about not specifically about food, but um, one of them was the um, when Subway partnered with the game um, and it felt unnatural and, and people didn't like it because it wasn't a natural fit. If you're going to do this kind of partnership, it needs to feel somewhat natural and make sense. Um, but that doesn't mean that healthy foods um, or non-junk foods can't partner with games and it, it will feel wrong if they do. Um, so one example uh, is a company called uh, Jack Lynx. Uh, they're a meat-based uh, snack company. Um, so they produce um, things like jerky and, and, and that kind of thing, um, which are to be seen as potentially healthier snacks. Not mega healthy, but you know, not <laughs> laden with sugar. Um, are you packing in the but... jerky, telling yourself that it's healthy? <laughs> <laughs> well, meat meat based snacks, so pro- protein and meat yes. based. Yeah, you can snacks. see how on Certainly... a certain diet that would be a uh, yes. If you're doing a uh, keto vibe. Yeah, so they, um, they're getting involved with eSports, which is where you see a lot of these partnerships start to form because it, with like sports teams, it, it feels like it's a natural fit. It's a good way to get into games in a more natural sense through a sponsorship route. Um, so they've invested uh, seven figures uh, into eSports um, and they're partnering with entertainment uh, brand Fnatic, which is spelled like Fnatic, but without the first A. Um, and they're going to be developing content, in-game activations, online and physical tools, and get storytelling through from from the pros. And um, yeah, so it's it's what you might think. Oh, a meat-based snack is not necessarily something you would think of games. You think of like the Xbox and pizza, or the Xbox and the donuts, and and you know, Gatorade is synonymous with sports. Um, but of course, you've now got esports where brands can get in on and. It, it, as I said before, it feels like that's a good stepping stone for a brand who might be thinking they want to get into games but can't think of maybe necessarily, oh, we should be in that game or I want to partner with that specific title because it might not quite make sense. Um, so that that's a good way in. And a good thing for food and drink um, companies who want to get into games and want to go down the sponsorship route, obviously we've seen huge brands kind of almost be made through sports. I mean. Gatorade with its partnerships, like with Michael Jordan, and you know, like if if you're a sports fan and you hear Gatorade bath, like you know what that means, and that's come through pure sports. Now drinks is a little bit easier, but food brands with pure sports, athletes who they sponsor can't eat <laughs> during a game. You're not gonna see, you know, um, insert famous sports out here. Go to the bench and start eating a Mars bar, like in the middle of a game. Like it's not gonna happen. But if you're playing esports, that's a little bit more acceptable. If someone, you know, grabs their Xbox donut halfway, you know, through a game or breaking a game, you're not going to be like, "What's that guy doing?" He's like, it just makes more sense. So that's that's a nice step in. So partnerships and sponsorships that way um, are one one way to get in uh, for food and drink beverage, uh, beverages in, into games. Mm-hmm. Uh, another way is to go straight into a game um, and do like a partnership. That way, so Hellman's did it. Uh, we talked about this in our roundup. I think uh, Emma Bud, uh, who's in the chat right now, she posted about it in one of our roundups a few months ago. What they did um, was they set up their own island, a Hellman's uh, island within Animal Crossing. Um, a few brands got in with Animal Crossing. Hellman's was one of the ones that did it. And as part of uh, their island, you players would go and drop off uh, like rotten um, spinaches, not spinaches, another vegetable beginning with S. That I've forgotten what they're called. What are they called? Turnips, doesn't even begin with an S. <laughs> uh, so they would drop spoiled turnips off, and for every person who did it, for every one that got dropped off, they would donate uh, two meals uh, to, to a charity and help people um, learn about food waste 
and how to manage it. So it was a great brand awareness piece that people are like, oh, well, that's cool that Hellman's are doing it. Mm -hmm. Like we looked and we're like, oh, that's cool. And then it wasn't just for personal gain, like there was charity involved and, you know, it kind of elevated Animal Crossing, it elevated Hellman's. And that's, again, you know, if you're like, oh, what kind of brand is going to get involved with Animal Crossing? You wouldn't think mayonnaise. So you know, <laughs> I'm always thinking about mayonnaise, Ben. Yes. Always. Um, so that that's a way you can do it. Um, there, there are branded games. Uh, so if you remember Pepsi Man from 1999, yep. maybe, which was a game just where you played as this action game where you played as this character, and it was basically just a way to get this character to look like Pepsi cans and drink Pepsi. I don't know if a man made of Pepsi cans drinking Pepsi is odd. It Maybe feels it's cannibalism. odd. cannibalism. He's drinking his own kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's that, and there's your your favourite, the Doritos one. I mean, you you love that game. I, I think crash you asked course. us to talk about this just because you wanted to talk about Doritos. Crash I did course. throw some Doritos Crash Course into the background a minute ago while you were talking. Um, and, I mean, yeah, when I think about gaming and, and beverage partnerships, I just think about Doritos. And what actually is weird about it is Doritos... I mean, I'm going to spoil my own sponsorship deal here. Doritos are actually terrible when you're gaming because they're, they're so dusty. Like, you get all oh, the yeah, flavour dust on your hands. No one wants that on their controller. Uh, but if you're watching Doritos, I love you. Please send me a bag of shitty heatwave. Um, thank just you. Just one bag. <laughs> yeah, watch one incredibly big bag. I want a Scrooge McDuck in a giant bag of chili heat wave. So if, if you were wondering why, you know, it, it feels like it's a cool thing to do, um, but it can have huge impacts. So um, Forbes released a, an article early this year. And so granted, this is uh, for uh, traditional sports, but just shows you the impact it can have. So Gatorade adds um, in sports games, not just that sports, in sports games, so things like FIFA, Madden, that kind of thing. That led to a 24% um, uplift in retail sales. And that's just through putting adverts in the games, not like a, a pop up or anything. Just like you know, when the sideboards games, when you have the sideboards in FIFA, things yeah. like that. So it's really inobtrusive way of getting in front of someone. Because I feel like we're kind of in the generation now where like we're, we're almost blind to some adverts. Like the adverts come on, we skip them. The advert comes on, we leave the room, we change the channel, we subscribe to premium editions of things to not see the adverts. So you've got to think of better ways and more natural ways to get in front of people um, and in the same same article they were talking about Fortnite and they said a, th a third of players have either bought, talked about or sought more information from in-game ads and again it's not just oh there's you know my game's interrupted from an advert it's there's something in the game from the brand and you want to be thinking about those experiences that you can put in, into the game and it doesn't even have to be just like you you know you're driving in in forza horizon and there's a billboard for doritos like if it is a natural fit you can you know partner with the game studio to have part of the experience branded so like if you know like you can brand a sword fight or brand a weapon or you know you can go and you know if part of the game is to you know you can get things out of vending machines like why not grab a coca-cola out of the vending machine Coca-Cola could partner with a game, you go get a Coca-Cola, you see a Coca-Cola and you go, hmm, I want a Coke, because that's just the <laughs> way that humans' brains work. Even if you're not subconsciously doing it, if you see it, it's going to be in your brain and then it's you're more likely to buy it. That's just, that's science. I'm, <laughs> I'm a scientist, so I can I can confirm that. Yeah. But yeah, this, it's thinking about those ways you can get it in naturally and not feel forced like i said before in the article that you shared in, in the chat we talked uh, about uh, a one that subway did and it felt unnatural and it's kind of like this is this makes no sense so don't, don't do that if it makes sense makes you know it's a good partnership then do it um yeah i guess i just want to finish on a nice little funny anecdote that dan shared with us uh, this morning when we said we were going to be talking about this so in the original theme hospital uh, there was going to be kit kat uh, vending machines and they actually were in the game um, and it was kind of a last minute thing even though there weren't Kit Kat drinks um, but it was like oh maybe it is going to be a thing so we, we'll end up putting them in and it, right at the 11th hour it was kind of like oh it's this might not actually be happening and they were just like well if we don't put it in it won't <laughs> so they, they put it in the game and they didn't get paid for it uh, with money <laughs> when it came out they just got sent like a box of Kit Kats and that was that was their payment so that was you know, that was great for Kit Kat. <laughs> got that exposure in, in Theme Hospital. And I mean, 
great great for the developers because who doesn't like a Kit Kat? Like I would get paid in Kit Kats. Actually, if Dan's still in the chat, I will not get paid in Kit Kats. Mm-hmm. But I will accept a Kit Kat as a bonus. How how many Kit Kats would it take for you to come on the stream and praise Kit Kats for a whole segment? One finger. <laughs> Okay, that's all we've got time for this week. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate your time. Uh, This has been the 47th episode of the X-Play Weekly Live Show. Can you believe we're still doing this and people haven't shut us down yet? It's incredible. We're going to get shut down after this week. Oh, absolutely. Uh, But if we don't, we'll be back here next week on Twitch at 4pm here in the UK. So that's UK time, BST at the minute. Um, I don't know what's happening next week. We haven't planned next week's show, so... Stay tuned on Twitter, we'll tell you all about it. But obviously we're coming up on our 50th show and we want something special for that. So if you have any ideas or things you want to see on the 50th show, let us know. Um, And we'll be planning that very soon. If you are watching us on Twitch live right now and you don't really follow us, please press the follow button. It's so easy, it's purple and it's down there and you just press it and then it's not even hard, it's not hard to find and the button makes me happy. Um, The other thing you can do if you're watching us on YouTube... Yep, which is our little catch-up service. You've got all sorts of things on YouTube, including this, clips from our other streams, clips from things that we don't even stream live at all. Um, loads of great content on the X-Play YouTube, so check that out as well, and subscribe over there to be notified whenever we release a new video. Um, and yeah, that's all we've got time for. We're actually a little bit over time, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, ben, thanks for joining me. Anytime. If there's donuts here, I'll be here. Yeah, so there is and... so much tro- there is so much chocolate in these. It's really difficult to eat on camera. Yeah, let's just go eat some more donuts in in the privacy of our own homes and off camera. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see you next week. Ivan and Bert, take care. Bye. Bye.